Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Judy Pizer is co-founder and current executive director of the Center for Southern Folklore. Pizer is a frequent lecturer at uh, preservation and folk gatherings throughout the world. She was recognized by Esquire magazine for changing America and by Southern Living for having made a difference in changing the South. I wish somebody would write something like that about me. That's Isn't that a cool? wonderful, that is nice. But this, the funny story about that Esquire magazine, it was, it was, they were doing this thing on people were change, un, people under 40 changing America. Uh -huh. So they called me and they went, they, they said, you know, this, oh, the, oh, and they, the woman stops, because she, they love what I was saying, et cetera, uh -huh. et cetera. Yeah. And then she said, oh, well, this will be great. We'll do it next year. And I go, no. I won't be 40. I won't be under 40 next year. <laughs> so literally, yeah. so I got in. And right. It was kind of cool. Meryl Streep was on my page. Oh, it was, really? Oh, it's a, it's a, oh, it was man, cool. Oh, were in good company. Well, it was kind of neat because then, then they had all these gatherings, which, of course, I never went to. But Well, unless you've been living in a cave mm -hmm. in Memphis, you have heard the name Judy Pizer, and, uh, and I've heard about you for years, heard you on the radio, and this is the first time that we've ever met, but it's people cool. have described you as being a force of nature. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> just, don't, and, just don't tell me no. Oh, okay. Well, the, and also, uh, you, you're the co-founder, right, uh, as right. I said in the intro, of the uh, Center for Southern mm -hmm. Folklore. So. Tell me, uh, for those who don't know the history, it's a, how did it how did it begin? Well, I mean, first of all, I should go back when I WKNO when I was when I was on University of Memphis campus. I worked there because I was in graduate school. I, mm -hmm. I'm from here. Went to the University of Illinois, came back to Memphis, and uh, David Yellen was my major teacher. Mm. And I was an only child. I'd always done everything that I wanted to do creatively, and I was the theater from, since I was a kid. <coughs> And I was really, by the time I graduated college, I was really interested in media. I decided I didn't want to be a lawyer. I wanted to, be, to deal with media. Came back to Memphis and began working with, at the University of Memphis, and, and I got a master's in uh, broadcasting and film. Mm -hmm. But as I was, was there, I graduated in 67, was in 68, was there in graduate school, and Dr. King was killed. And so uh -huh. the work that I ended up doing had everything to do about civil rights, about people's rights about the war on poverty. My graduate thesis was the war on poverty, the Memphis front. Right. So I'd made several films, but at that point I went, I was really doing documentary work. And if and I remember correctly, if my, my history is, is correct, uh, Yellen was doing a lot of work archiving oh, yeah, he that did, yeah, he, at the same time. He and yeah. his wife were doing all that. Right. And so I, I ended up um, realizing that I really wanted to do films about people, but I wanted to talk about what was right about people, what uh -huh. was good. I didn't, I'd seen many children been, that had been bitten by rats, and uh -huh. I mean, it was pretty awful yeah. that I, when I documented a lot of that. So anyway, so I'm working for Mississippi Educational Television. I meet this guy, Bill Ferris, who had shot a film with David Evans, uh, and David recorded it, Bill shot it, and and Bill hadn't edited it all, so a lot to happen at, at that station. I went, okay, let me take this home and edit it. I was just there for, I was doing some research for him. And uh, I edited this film called Gravel Springs, Fife and Drum. Which I've seen. It's, it's a cool, it's a wonderful well, film. Thank you. And that film got us in all kind of doors. The Rockefeller mm -hmm. Ford Foundation, National Endowment for the Arts, because it was a, it was unique. It talked about people. It talked about real people and real culture. Uh -huh. And I was hooked. I, yeah. really, I mean, I was, I grew up in a family that celebrated the individual people. I mean, I, I, it's hard right. to describe. We can do that another story, but, 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 just but, so, but, but the, it was really important to me that I had a way and I went Bill Ferris and I started the center together, but I had all of a sudden I had a vehicle where I could record someone and Three generations from now, they're still coming back wanting to know more about their grandparents that we recorded. Right. 
And so we were giving a voice to many, many people, all different cultures, all different neighborhoods, rich, poor, black, white, Chinese, Vietnamese, didn't make any difference because we were telling people's stories. Mm -hmm. I remember going to some of our early parties that, I, you know, there would be the, the richest and the poorest people in town. Didn't make any difference because they were there for one reason. It was about what we were doing and the culture we were documenting. And so mm -hmm. over the years, it's been really amazing to, uh, to talk to people. Just last week, uh, Frank Boyle's grandson, Frank Boyle, was a bo he painted bottles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's in this guy's a rock. They're, he's married, they're real smart, smart people, he his, and his wife. And they came back to just do research on the grandfather. Mm -hmm. And we have information. And so we're able to talk to people about their families uh -huh. and also use what, everything we've done from music to art to use these as vehicles for people to know about their own culture and know about other people's culture. When we do our festival, Labor Day weekend, it's always amazing. It's a free event. It's downtown. Mm -hmm. People love it because they can rub, rub elbows with everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we celebrate everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that in a city that's had so much trauma, mm -hmm. I think that we need to look for the positive. Yeah. And we need to look to see what's right about the world, right. and, and that's what I've always been interested in. Well, g going back to that for a second, in another incarnation, in another television station many years ago, I, I used to do features, and I would go out <clears throat> to the countryside and uh, find just amazing characters. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the mule trader today. Oh, Ray Another, Lum? Yes. You live and learn, and then you die and forget it all. <laughs> <laughs> After I edited that film, I told somebody I'd been living with an 80-year-old man for like six months finish, finishing that film. But oh, was, well, I, in amazing. looking at him, I, I was thinking, look how much we've lost. I mean, he was such a reflection of the era that he lived in, you know. And uh, it, it, it was amazing to watch. And I, and I... I'm happy to say that I saw a little bit of that when I was when I was doing the features mm -hmm. out there, and uh, you would you would see these people who were just who were just amazing, and the and the character of that is kind of changing, I guess, because of all the technology and the different way we we live our lives today. Well, you know? yeah, but everybody has their own voice, and you know, and mm -hmm. I mean, I, we had a, a school group recently at the center, and I invited uh, Tamara Parrish, who's a dancer, to come in, and and uh, and Tanya Dyson do a singing and uh, do a song. And these kids were captured mm -hmm. by urban dance and great singing. Mm -hmm. And these were younger performers. And so I think that we have to look, we have to figure out ways to, it's important to look back and celebrate the people that we've recorded. Mm -hmm. But I think that we've got to look at people now and say, okay, what is your music? What is your life? How can we use your music to let people know about Memphis, about our culture, mm -hmm. about individuals. And I think that art and music and dance are the things that help us all communicate with one another. Yeah. And I wouldn't have said that, you know, 20 years ago mm -hmm. or 30 years ago, or 40 <laughs> years ago. But, but I mean, I really am beginning to look and see why it's important. I mean, I'm just as interested in talking about Ray Lum as I am to talk about um, someone who's a juker or a dancer or an artist. Uh, some uh, 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 beatbox person. I mean, mm -hmm. and and to me, if we have we have, to, I'm personally very open to all that, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. and if you're open to all that, you can learn about them, and then they can also learn about the Ray Lums of the world. We've got this exhibit right, at right. the center that we had out here, and um, the and and it really showed that. I mean, families came because we had recorded their families, you know. Uh -huh. When, it, it should be said that you, that you just have an amazing collection out there we do. of not only music, <clears throat> of of history, of culture. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 truly astounding. I've I've read some of the critiques of people who've gone down to the to, to the Center for S Southern Folklore and done research, yeah. and they were just floored with the kind of collection. You know, it's have. funny that we, a lot of people have done research, but uh, the, the ballet recently had this guy, Reggie Wilson, in town, and and I saw when he was in here for a rehearsal, was he's, uh -huh. I think he's a MacArthur fellow, and he was he's in New York, but uh, he used, did research on this region at the Center for Southern Folklore 
when we were at the corner of Bellevue and Peabody, you know, in the 70s. <laughs> he came and said, don't you remember? I said, I remember you. Well, I forget why. I said, don't you remember? We looked at all this stuff. So we've been able to be a resource because there's not this kind of, we're, we're probably the, one of the only kind of cultural resources like this in the city. I never want to say we're the only, but uh -huh. that we really, you know, we look to people in their traditions. I mean, I, when a musician, the young musician performed on the stage recently, I said, I said, you know, you've got to just go up there and you, you've let them know about your work. Yeah. You let them know about who you are. You know, I'm not going to present everything. You've got to talk about it. And it gives people, and, and they're invested in their own career and they mm -hmm. learn how to communicate. But I've, I've only recently been thinking about how much everybody has meant to me. Mm -hmm. And every single person, the Ray Lums of the world, Arthur Turner's. Um, I mean, I used to, we slept, Moe's Vinson, everywhere. Mm -hmm. He was a boogie-woogie piano player. He played at the center for years. Yeah. You know, I mean, I took, I, on the plane, we, I took him everywhere. And when, I mean, one time we all, this, Rufus, uh, uh, Rufus, Carla, Marvell, the Sun Rhythm Section, I took Moe's and somebody else was there. We all went to Chicago together. For the, Chicago featured right. Memphis at the Memphis at the uh, Chicago Blues Festival, and to see Moe's up there on the stage with all these people, and uh -huh. I mean, it was just it was amazing, and you know, and to see the the, the way people responded to the music. The minute you mentioned uh, Rufus, uh, it triggered uh, it triggered a name, uh, and it's somebody <laughs> that uh, you and I have in common. Who's Graziano? Graziano Uliani. Uliani, yeah. And uh, I met him in 2006 at the uh, Peretta uh, Soul Festival yeah. in Italy. And he is, he's amazing, you but know. You used to walk down the street in Peretta and go, uh, Grazie, I mean, uh, Ruffaloni. They would always say, Ruffaloni, Ruffaloni. Hello, Ruffaloni. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it, it was amazing. But Graziano, Credits me for introducing him to Rufus. Right. Graziano was a de lived in this little town out. Peretta is like a little town right outside of Bologna, uh -huh. uh, and they have like hot springs and that kind of stuff. People go there and take baths, which right. is good, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they and and he uh, was a DJ. And after Otis Redding died, he was at Otis Redding's grave. He went there just and. And he went, you know. Kind of a pilgrimage. Oh yeah, 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 a musical yeah. pilgrimage, you know, right, and yeah. to America. And and he goes, and he come, he came to Memphis too, but he came, went to there. And he says, you know, I'm going to do a festival in honor, uh, you know, Otis Redding and this kind. Of, and so, he lived on a street in in this town that he had a house in in in, this, in, in Peretta. It's called on the Via Otis Redding. Huh. And he named the park where the performance is is Parco Rufus Thomas. That park that everybody yes, was in. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That, that, and, that's coming back to and me. So yes, all, yeah. And so all and so and so I mean Graziano and he comes back here every year, uh -huh. uh, and he's just an amazing person. But it's you know it's like we're all crazy to do this stuff. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I mean I should be in Florida somewhere, but you know, but well, the, I told you the story in, in Pareto where I met uh, I met a blues mu musician out there. And uh, he was from Memphis. Michael Allen, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, and I, I was trying to imagine what his day-to-day -day life uh, in this uh, this uh, Italian village. I mean, it was so charming. I mean, you know, after you after you go there, you just kind of want to move to Peretta, you know. But uh, it's a know. great place. Yeah, and, you really know, and if is. people are listening, if they're going to go be in Europe in uh, July, it's I think at the third week in July is when the. Peretta Soul Festival is. Yeah, it's still going after all these years. You've got something new going on uh, at the uh, Southern, uh, uh, at the always Southern Folklore uh, uh, Center. <laughs> and uh, one of the things I notice is on the internet you have folk streams. That's why I was able to see yeah. a lot of the uh, early uh, yeah, people films should, that you if did. If they're interested in our films, they should go to folk streams. It's run by a guy out of North Carolina, and mm -hmm. all of our films are, are available on there. We also we're trying to repackage them and add things to it. The, all day and all night, the film with B.B. King and Rufus Thomas mm -hmm. that we did. Um, yeah, do yourself a favor. It, it, it is it's really good. Thank you. The the fife, uh, the the fife and drum uh, uh, core out of Gravel Springs, yeah. like you were telling me before. That's there, uh, oh. and of course uh, the Mule Trader yeah. is there. Yeah. I mean, we've done films about people that lived in the rural area of Mississippi. That you know, you you looked at their 
their house, and it, you you could look, you could think you were in Africa. I mean, the, the way the fences were, and you know, and this guy Lewis Dotson blew a bottle, and he said talked about how he would communicate from one hill to the next hill by blowing a bottle to his friend. Wow. You know, but uh, but I also think that we've got to look at it. We look at a lot of things today. We look at a lot of ethnic communities. We look at mm -hmm. neighborhoods. We look at what kids are interested in. Mm -hmm. And you know, and so, and that's it's real important that that everybody has a home at the center. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope that people come down and, and visit us. Uh, we have music on the weekends. Uh, mm -hmm. They need to check our website to make sure. And uh, you also have a little restaurant there too. We right? have, yeah, we have a restaurant. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> when when we moved on to, to Main Street, mm -hmm. I guess when we were on Beale Street too, uh, a dear friend of mine, Ella Kizzy. Mm -hmm. um, sort of designed all the foods we have, and I call it designing because I mean she made them her whole life. Yeah. And so you know she taught me all about hot water cornbread, and mm. you know, and she knew that I didn't eat meat, so I she made so we made greens without meat in it, and mm -hmm. the, when the spices in it, are, we still use all of her recipes. Mm -hmm. You know, macaroni and cheese, hot water cornbread, and peach cobbler. That if you want to put it in your mouth, you want to just keep eating until you get gargantuan. But I mean, it's fabulous stuff, and, mm. and we have meatloaf now, but. But most of the rest of the food that we sell are things that Ella taught us about. I see. And, uh, you know, she was a, a cook's cook, and she still <laughs> is a cook's cook, but thank God. But Well, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the, the Memphis Music and Heritage Festival, which you talked about uh, er, earlier in the show. Uh, I was talking to somebody about it the other day, and they uh, they said to me, it's amazing because... When you started it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was just this little small thing that you guys used to do on Beale Street, and it grew into this, what yeah. is now uh, uh, Pretty big just event. an institution. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to expand it still, mm -hmm. so yeah. funders, watch out. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, we need good support, because I really think, and first of all, the, we did a first festival in 82, Mm -hmm. And then we were on Beale Street for a number of years, and we didn't start. And then we started back in '88, I think. And then uh, we did some on Beale Street, some on, on Court Square. The essence of it is that we present music, all different kinds of music, all different kind of dance, all, young, old, you mm -hmm. name it, they're there. And we put them on stages so you can sit at one stage, stay stay there the whole time, or you can move around. And every year, I try to get as much dance as I can, mm -hmm. as much art as I can. And because I think that this is the one thing that if people come downtown to see this festival, they'll learn about who they are and where they are in a community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's so amazing, you know. I mean, you'll hear church, you know, gospel people talking about their church and invite you to the church. Or mm -hmm. you'll hear music that's from a, a, a cafe or, you know, it's not mm -hmm. many juke houses still left, but... Yeah. You know, um, they're not. But when we started, I mean, we would go, you know, the musicians played at Green's Lounge one day and played at the festival the next and, uh -huh. or played at a jazz club one day and came down. So, but uh, it's, you know, and people like Rufus and Carla and Bobby Rush and mm. many people like that. Uh, Charlie Musselwhite yeah. has played at our festivals. But it, they, but it really is centered around this, the Memphis Delta region, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's exciting. You know, uh, you, you've got so much on your plate, and uh, we've got about seven minutes left in the show, but I, I wanted to ask you about this uh, latest project that you're involved in, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very, very exciting. It's, uh, it involves the blues. It involves music in Memphis, and it involves young performers. And Vietnam. Well, I'm working with a, a friend, Nesby Blanchard, and we decided, we started talking a while ago and a year ago maybe and we it, it, it evolved very quickly because when we went to Vietnam to talk to them about our project they wanted it amazingly because this was this is a, the 20th anniversary of America and Vietnam reconciling their differences mm -hmm. and so it's it's an amazing it, it, it and so what we're doing is we're bringing about 15 artists musicians and an artist and a chef and uh, to talk about Memphis music and culture. We're doing seven, and this is all with the, this is, we were vetted by both the Vietnamese government and the American government, you know, and, and we, there, it's a big deal. Uh -huh. 
it's a big deal for us, and it's a bigger deal for the communities. I now, now the, 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 the artists that you're carrying on, on this tour, they are... Uh, contemporary, but most of them are younger artists. Uh-huh. There are well, not younger. Not everybody's not younger, but I mean, it's it's. There's a blues a harmonica player. There's a who plays guitar. There's a sax player. There's a uh -huh. um, a Mexican guitarist. Uh, there's a lot of people who are that we always present at our festivals. Yes. And and I knew that this whole group of people could work really well together. A guy that plays a piano and an accordion. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, and so what we're we've put together is a show that will present. Five shows at the American Club, which is the American Embassy's outdoor venue uh, in Hanoi. And then we'll do uh, three shows in the provinces, Taiwan, um, Halong Bay, and uh, I can't think of the other, the other city, but mm -hmm. three of those. And, uh, and these cities, when we went to the, this is like the northern part of Vietnam, when major like universities are there, cultural centers are there, and we were just amazed at some at the performances I mean the, the greetings that we had of people and so we know that and then they heard that we were coming back and so they're really excited we'll be working with we work with students we work with artists mm -hmm. uh, and it's a way that we can present do three things we can present Memphis musicians right and help them not just have a place to play in Memphis but somewhere around the world mm -hmm. which we help to do uh, and so you've got you're giving jobs to Memphis artists. Mm -hmm. They're being able to, um, we, when people see us, see us at these cities, they'll be able to come back to Memphis. So we're going to be helping tourism and right. we're promoting Memphis music. And it's not so, just in Vietnam no. either. You're, you're also, We've you just have signed, a con a, uh, signed a contract with China? For yeah, that? we're working with a major uh, agency, a major uh, tour company in China, and that's going to be a. Um, a way that we're for three years we will work together to develop programming and they're interested in what we're talking about because we're not talking about oh let's sit I mean there is one night where there's a thing for the expats at, at the at the uh, club but the big thing is we're talking about families and children uh -huh. and so then that and so and the people in China are also interested in that yeah and it's one of the largest uh, touring company uh, the companies that puts packages together and they bring people like I mean they bring like the Disney right. there. I mean, you know, they bring big shows, but, but right. these are shows where... Yeah, I read that, that it was the largest yeah. booking a a agency large, in Ch yeah. China. Yeah. And so, and, but, but we're going to be doing things where people will learn about... Like for instance, the, the stage at the, in the American Club and at the, in the venues that we go to, the artists will spend time with, with the groups of families and children before they go on stage and there'll be people, you can learn how to sing a Memphis song, you know, you can <laughs> learn how to do a beatbox something, you can learn about an accordion, you can, you know, you can learn how to play a, a, a guitar riffs. Uh -huh. And these, and this, our, our thing is that we've got to trans, tra we have translators everywhere because it has to be translated into Vietnamese. Right, right. It's, you know, and so this is, it, it's kind of exciting and hopefully I can come back over the years and, and tell you about all these visits, but you know, this is our first big adventure like this, and we're real excited. And well, it sounds you know, like it's going to be—it's just going and, to be and amazing. If people are interested; they can go to realmemphismusic.com. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Jim? Yeah, I have, and I need to. I know. I know. It's every time I right now. Every time I have, this is hysterical. Every time I have to write a proposal, uh -huh. I, I sit and write, and I go. Well, let me write this other paragraph of something else. I mean, <laughs> I literally grew up in a world of talkers. Yeah. My father was a lawyer. Yeah. My uncle was the attorney general under Crump. I mean, everybody, and I mean, uh, my other uncle, my Uncle Herman, was worked with the people who developed all the early shopping centers, the Shanebergs, and the people that developed the shopping centers. Yeah. He booked Elvis on flatbed trucks at these when these shopping centers in the fifties were opening. Oh, I mean, my so goodness. and I would sit yeah. down. At our dinners, our at Friday nights, our dinners with my families, and and I would just hear these amazing stories. Yeah. So I didn't just start listening to stories when I picked up a camera. As a kid, I remember. I remember as a kid, I literally took a wire. Daddy had a wire tape recorder, uh -huh. and I put it in my my room, and I sort of extended the microphone, so I was recording on a wire tape recorder. Wow. I mean, I loved all that. I mean, to me. And now, you know, picking up a phone that talks or walks or whatever, it's just, it's not normal. I don't think it's unusual, but I, I, I really had a chance to, to just 
learn about yeah, stuff. To and develop that, that know, interest. You know, from theater, if I was in the children's theater, I mean, all this kind of stuff. That's interesting that you, you said that because that was the first thing my father bought when I was, I, I think it was about four, four and a half, you know, he, he went down to Sears and bought this massive reel-to-reel. -reel. I know. And I was just fascinated with it, yeah. you know. And uh, it was just amazing to watch. Uh, the, um, l let's talk just a little bit in the time that we have left about Rufus, when, w Rufus Thomas. When okay. did you and Rufus uh, uh, first meet? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, it was a long time ago. Um, well, you know what? I'm, I, I have to tell you that we've run out of time, but that gives me an overture to the next time that you're with us on this program. Sounds good. And we'll talk Rufus. Okay. Thank you so much sure. for being with us, Judy.